On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, it's an adventure to the Dry Tortugas, 75 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. We'll be bottom fishing, overnighting, and even more bottom fishing. This is one incredible journey you need to be a part of. George Bovaromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Key West in the fabulous Florida Keys, an angler's paradise. You have just so many fishing opportunities here, it's hard to pick just one or two to target. But now, throw in the Dry Tortugas, Fort Jefferson, approximately 75 miles west of Key West, and it opens up an entirely different frontier. So, with the Mark VI down at Murray Marine, and with local pro DJ Berrios riding shotgun with me, we were off to the Dry Tortugas to do some of this incredible bottom fishing. So I'm 23 years old. I've uh, been guiding as soon as I got my captain's license, obviously when you turn 18. Uh, I got that before I got my high school diploma and college wasn't the route for me, so I got right into fishing. It's in my blood. Um, my grandfather fishes, my uncle fishes, so I just wanted to hop right into that. I've watched them, you know, I grew up on the boat with my grandfather, my uncle. We were always out on the water any chance we got. 75 miles, I call that the long run from Key West. That's quite a considerable distance. But because you have Fort Jefferson and the Dry Tortugas, that's like that big allure, just an attraction that makes people want to go out there and check it out. You know, you have 17 miles through the lakes, which is calm, protected water that takes up the first part of the trip. Then you cross to the Marquesas, then you get in the quicksands, and if you're tied and wind is a little funky, you know, it can get pretty nasty in there. Crossing Rebecca obviously is one of the worst places when the weather's not right. Keeping a sharp eye on weather is critical for any fishing outing, and even more so for long distance overnight trips. Safety gear is paramount. In addition to the required safety items, my boat is equipped with an ACR EPIRB and personal locator beacons, ACR BIVI for satellite texting, and also an inflatable life raft. All right, so whenever we're going out on a bottom fishing trip, we always like to start with almost a guaranteed bait, and pretty much you can count on pinfish being in the trap. And don't overlook fresh bonita, value, and squid, just in case the fish shy away from live baits. It happens. For yellow talon, we also took two 25 pound blocks of chum. DJ put us over a spot. I tossed the anchor and dispatched a chum hoop. With the sim red showing big bottom fish and solid yellow tails, we both dropped to bottom and hooked up. My fish immediately rocked me up, but DJ, he was still in the game. That's what they say. Make me a liar. <laughs> This one's definitely a little bigger. Hey, the DJ show is fun to watch while I'm waiting to scoop her out, but not as much fun as actually bending that rod and fighting a fish. And I think it's the next best thing. Is it feeling grouper-like to you, or? I'm not sure. Kind of ate up in the water column a little bit. Might be a nice mutton. How far into the boat are you? I um, think I'm getting pretty close. Alrighty. I don't see color yet, but. Might want to come scoop this one up for me, yeah, George. Sure. I don't know Coming what it is right yet, now, buddy. Maybe that grouper will come out. I'm starting to see color now. I am ready for it. Looks you. like a big old mutton snapper. Yeah. There we go. How about that? I think that's doing all right, DJ. Oh, this is a beautiful fish. Really remarkable. Beautiful colors. I love the pink on them. And they're always so different. Certain areas you catch them, you know, some get green, we need this real big, dark red, the the white. environment. Yeah. That is so good. And sure enough, he pulls out a dry tortuga's mainstay, which in my opinion, this is one of the key fish that I believe people come down here for, a big Florida Keys dry tortuga's mutton snapper. Things are starting to look really good now on the Mark VI. Our predominant bottom dropping setup consists of Penn Battle 3 5000 DX, which stands for dealer exclusive in the silver color, 
and Penn Authority 5500 series reels, paired with 7-foot Penn Carnage 3 rods, rated for 40 to 80 pound lines. Our main line was 30 pound Suffix 832 braid in coastal camo. Leaders are 4 feet of 50 pound Suffix advanced fluorocarbon, joined to the main line with a barrel swivel. An egg sinker rode on the main line. Live pinfish and bonita chunks were pinned onto 4 rod 3X strong VMC hooks, model 8386. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. I'm fishing off the Dry Tortugas, 75 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. DJ Berrios boated a big mutton snapper, and I finally had to break off the fish that rocked me up. The weather is exceptional, and regarding the weather, here's Chris Rothwell, lead meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Key West, to explain how sea heights are measured. If you're ever on the weather channels and you're listening to the marine forecast before you, you, you're getting your boat ready, and it's saying uh, uh, winds offshore, 15 to 20 knots, seas four to six feet. That's a significant wave height we're talking about, a four to six foot significant wave height. And if I can show you up here, what we're talking about with significant wave height is really on a day in the Straits, I was talking to you, George, and that, say if we, we forecast a four foot sea in the Straits, we are basically forecasting a significant wave height right here of four feet. When in fact, as you look at this graph, wave height increases going this way, and the number of waves here, really most of the waves on that day are three foot. This is where the spectrum of the wave really matters in that although we're forecasting four, most are three. But the problem is are all these waves out here. So on a four foot day, one in a hundred waves could be 50% higher. So on a four foot day, you're gonna see those six footers. Fortunately for us, <laughs> there are no six footers in the forecast. So let's get back to catching fish off the dry tortugas. One thing I, I respect about DJ and fishing with individual, you really pick up on what they're really all about. And we got schooled by a couple, uh, about two or three big grouper on this that he said, let's go ahead and leave this spot, okay? I don't want to sit there and beat up on it. He's marking this one area. You can see the fish activity on the SimRam machine. He said, drop the hook, boom, anchor goes back down. We get a bite, same routine. 25 pound block of chum goes overboard. And while I was up there starting off to try to get some yellowtails, he went straight for the bottom. And as soon as that bait hit, that rod bends and he's locked up into a really interesting tug of war. That's the right one. I'm getting hit now too. If you need me to help you with a net, let me know. When I get closer, I will. I got him off the bottom now, he's coming. Nice red grouper. It didn't take long for that one, did it? That was quick. That's a gorgeous red grouper. That was quick. <laughs> Wasn't letting this one get to his home. Off the dry tortugas, the action is generally fast and varied. We scored muttons, scamp, beautiful fish, red grouper, black grouper, yellowfin grouper, strawberry grouper, yellowtails, and some interesting oddities, the likes of an oversized triggerfish, bonita, and even a squirrel fish. After a solid day of fishing, we headed to Fort Jefferson and into the Anchorage where we would overnight. But before dropping anchor, I beached the Mark 6 and took a tour of the fort with DJ. Fort Jefferson was designated a national park in 1992. It's the largest masonry structure in the Western Hemisphere and consists of 16 million bricks. The US military started building it in 1846 to protect the Florida coastline from hostile invaders. At one point, the fort served as a prison. The fort is a major tourist attraction, 
and accessible by Key West based float planes, tour boats, charter boats, and like us, recreational vessels. After the tour, the boat was anchored and we prepared for dinner. Show producer Rob the Sweet Green ushered in happy hour with a meat and cheese board and Papa's Pilar rum. DJ cleaned the scamp and a few yellowtails and Rob began cooking dinner. It was then time to call it a night. Five of us had to figure out where we would sleep. The Mark VI has a lot of room, but it's not Carnival Cruise Lines. However, it all worked out. The stars that evening were a show all unto themselves. George Foveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix, always use the best line. Start, run, store with Startron. George, we'll be right back. Morning finally dawned and Rob Sweet Green was up early preparing breakfast. We all survived sleeping aboard the Mark 6 at the Dry Tortugas, 75 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. Before we ran back to Key West, we decided to hit one last spot. We anchored up on the numbers, started chumming, and rallied the yellowtails in full force. Oh, there's a big, big giant king under my yellowtail here. He tried to get this tail. See the shadow down there? And there's a zero with him. Got somebody trying to eat your yellowtail? Oh, there's a big king that went under him, and then, then a, uh, about a six, seven pound zero, big zero too. But there's a big king that followed this guy up. That's a respectable yellowtail right there. Crazy, Got him. crazy bite. Yellowtail's just non-stop right now. As many as you want back there. What, we got them five feet behind the motors? Some of them come up out of the chum bag. Picking and choosing which ones you want to catch. With so many yellowtails around, you just knew some big groupers were down below them. DJ dropped down and immediately hooked up. That's not a yellowtail. That's pulling a little different than a yellowtail there. He's trying to get me into his home. Might need a little assist on the net. I know you're gonna tell me that. <laughs> He's coming up now. Here she comes. We got color. Looks, like, looks like a big old red grouper. Yes, yeah, that is a stud right there. Now, that's what we're looking for. Oh, I'm telling you what. Oh man, I want to talk about a red grouper? That is a full-grown red grouper right there. Oh, I, I was gonna help you out some more, but I had to get this yellowtail. Oh, I don't embarrass me. <laughs> That's not a bad yellowtail either compared to that grouper you just pulled up. Pop this hook out of this guy here. All right, go for it. You know, there is, I was standing by, had the net ready, and there's a couple of times where I thought for sure he was gonna get you in that pop. Right, yeah. Then I, then you, you work and you work him, and at one point when then you started getting them up, then you started uh, short stroking that fish and bring him up. I said, at that point, I knew it. I'd walk over there to net. That's you can a, see he's all scratched up right here, trying to get me in there. I could see that. I wasn't letting him um, get away. No, I mean, let, me, let me put this in there first. Just a little <laughs> embarrassing standing by you with that one, right? Then we're, and I want to get a still of that one, too. We hated to pull anchor, but we had a lot of work ahead of us back in Key West. At the marina, it was a team effort. I fueled the boat and washed it. DJ cleaned our catch. And other team members assisted with hitching trailer to truck and standing by to pull the boat. 
In about an hour's time, we completed the task and in record fashion, at least for us. Once we were back in Key West, we certainly made up from overnighting aboard the Mark VI. Our accommodations were a new resort right off of Roosevelt just before you enter into Old Town. It's the Capitana Key West and it's part of the Opal Collection. It's a boutique waterfront hotel that has private cottages. You have well-appointed guest rooms with appointed balconies. There's a pool, it's pet friendly, and you're just minutes from Old Town Key West. Just a really relaxing facility. It's brand new too. Again, the Capitana Key West, check that out. We did and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Mercury Performance Stats, Key West, Dry Tortugas. Seas, Calm, Power, Triple Mercury Verado 400 horsepower outboards. Props, Mercury Inertia Eco 21 inch pitches. Total miles, 205. Consistent cruise, 5200 RPM. Speed, 50 miles per hour. Total fuel burn, 228 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. VMC, your expert in hooks. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. It's back to Key West in the Florida Keys. Like the fishing here, there are so many on-land attractions that it's often hard deciding on what to take in. One such attraction that I've yet to visit is the Key West Cemetery. So I met up with Rosa Diaz, sexton of the cemetery, for a tour of this rather interesting and historic property. The cemetery's been here since 1847 after a massive hurricane destruction. This is the area of Key West, it's Midtown. It's the center of the Key West Point our highest level where if we are to go through another massive hurricane, the burials here will be protected. Rosa takes us on a tour, paying tribute to some of the historical Key West figures at rest here. So this here is the monument of William M. Carey, which was our first millionaire here in Key West. Here lays our earliest headstone that was um, saved from our previous he uh, cemetery that got destroyed by the hurricane and got replaced here in our new cemetery. And our latest one, 1813. Even Mother Nature likes to step in on certain headstones and make a memory of itself. So that headstone was engulfed by the tree? The headstone was there first and then the tree grew and hovered the headstone. Before our tour came to a close, Rosa pointed out some of the interesting headstone quotes which bring a lot of folks to the cemetery. That is, from a tourist perspective. This marker here in the Roberts plot has become the biggest attraction here in the Key West Cemetery. I told you I was sick. Ernest Hemingway once wrote, only those who live in proximity to death live their lives to the fullest. So on that note, we decided to leave the graveyard and toast a great fishing trip at the new Hemingway Library inside the Papa's Pilar Distillery, downtown Key West. As you walk in, one is taken back to a time in true Hemingway-esque fashion. Referred to as the daiquiria, Handcrafted rum drinks can be enjoyed within a Hemingway atmosphere. I even hung out with Ernest for a bit. Not only was the fishing really good down there with quality fish, but the adventure itself. For me, being the first time on Fort Jefferson, anchoring in the harbor, uh, cooking fresh catches and the whole bit, uh, it took me back to a time uh, when my dad used to go to the Marquesas back then when I was a kid, and we would anchor off the Marquesas and do the same thing, cook the fresh catch. And this was pretty much a continuation of what happened back in my childhood off the Marquesas, but now it was Dry Tortugas, Fort Jefferson, and I have a guy riding shotgun like DJ Berrios. He is one incredibly good angler, and a kid at that, 23 years old, his own charter business, and if you want him, he even hires out to go board your own boat. 
So the Drive for Tugas is definitely something I believe everybody should go see, you know, once at least once in their lifetime. I go down there every chance I get. Whenever we have a weather window, I'm not fishing with clients, you know, we'll fuel up, head down there. Sometimes we just go hang out at the port. We won't even fish or dive. We just go chill and, you know, it's, it's definitely something everybody should see. It's a beautiful place. If you want to keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you can see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.